Good afternoon. It's a lot of announcements today, so just bear with me. The parish community of St. Mary's wishes to extend a warm welcome to all who come to worship here with us, especially all visitors. This weekend, we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Friday, November 8th, from 6 to 7.30 p.m., the Bible study group will meet for its initial meeting inside St. Joseph Church instead of inside the hall. All meetings after that will meet in Our Lady's Hall at St. Joseph as originally advertised. Again, first meeting inside the church, all subsequent meetings inside Our Lady's Hall. Please keep an eye out in the pews for special collection envelopes that go directly to St. Mary's St. Vincent de Paul Society to assist their efforts in providing help to those in need in our community for Thanksgiving. We thank you very much for helping your neighbors to have a plentiful Thanksgiving. Next weekend, on November 9th, next Saturday, the Modern Day Women's Guild will be having their annual craft fair from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in Our Lady's Hall at St. Joseph. Please come start your holiday shopping and grab some lunch, too. Also next weekend, at both parishes during Saturday Masses, we will be having our Masses of Remembrance, where we will honor your loved ones whose funerals occurred within our collaborative during the past year. All are invited to attend this special liturgy. And finally, for next weekend, November 9th and 10th, Cardinal Sean is asking the parishes of the Archdiocese of Boston to step forward with a special collection to help our brothers and sisters in need. Catholic Charities USA is providing immediate disaster relief to those affected by Hurricanes Helene and Milton. We thank you very much for your prayers and generosity for everyone impacted by these hurricanes. One more announcement, I promise. This weekend, November 2nd and 3rd, is our parish's monthly second collection, which goes toward the parish maintenance and upkeep. We greatly appreciate your generosity for this collection. At this Mass, we remember in a special way, Eddie Rezens. Please stand and greet our celebrant, Father Mark Story. And please join in singing our opening hymn, number 215 in your Breaking Bread issue, Come Ye Thankful People, Come, number 215. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we offer this Mass today for, for Eddie Resendez, for whom the, uh, the, we offer this Mass, and for his peaceful repose of his soul for eternity. Brothers and sisters, as we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, 
The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have just such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You were right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than He. And to love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that He answered with understanding, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the gospel wash away our sins. With God as our Father, then that means that we're all brothers and sisters. And we must show this in practice as a community. Love God and love our neighbor. And on these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Now as disciples of Jesus Christ, as modern day disciples... We must engrave this law into our memory and our intellect. And only in this way can we attain God in the total gift of ourselves to our neighbor. The word neighbor was synonymous with kindred. And to love those who were members of the same family, same family, the same clan, the same tribe, the same people the same parish. But as for people who did not belong to the Jewish people, Deuteronomy, which is part of the Torah, says you may exact remission of debt from foreigners, but you must cancel whatever claim you have on your brother. The concept of neighbor grew so that there is was such a great discussion as Who is my neighbor? Some doctors said that the concept of neighbor had to be extended beyond the limits of of race and your clan. Others would not hear this, and that's why a doctor went to Jesus with the debated question. And he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with this parable, and I'm sure we've all heard it, but we know the parable of the Good Samaritan, where the neighbor was not a relative, not a friend, not a nobleman, but someone who approached. He was independent of religion, of race, color, sex, or language. And you must love him. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
The doctor was already close to the kingdom because the fact was that the, the kingdom consists in uniting the love of God and the love of neighbor and of ourselves too. Because that's a part that we often overlook. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if you feel comfortable with yourself, if you don't hate yourself, but if you love yourself, then that love of God which flows through you flows through you to your neighbor and back to God. To enter the kingdom, he needed one more step. The Old Testament taught as yourself. But Jesus stretches the criterion. He says, this is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one can have greater love than to lay down one's life or his life for his friends. And this criteria from the New Testament is to love one's neighbor as Jesus has loved us. So that love of God flows from God, Jesus, through us. We love ourselves and then it flows back to our neighbors and it flows back to God. This true word of God shows us the way to make a more just and a fraternal way of life to finally achieve the kingdom of God. Part of his, his homily, his reflection, our new Archbishop Richard Henning on Thursday made a comment. Now, as you are all probably aware, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, the USCCB. It has a document, it's called Faithful Catholic, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. And it's a teaching document. And if you're interested in I in, highly encourage you to go to their website and look at the USCCB. There's much more. There's all the daily readings. There's all the weekend masses. There's, there's all kinds of other articles there. So you should have that bookmarked and, and go there frequently. There's also reflections there for the daily masses that you can hear. But one of the things that the conference says to us is that as patriotic citizens... It's our responsibility to vote. It's our responsibility to vote. Archbishop Henning went further. He said, before you vote, if you haven't already, pray over it. Pray hard. Ask God what is his will that you should do. And then he's further suggested, and again, I'm paraphrasing what our archbishop said. But he said that when you're in the polling booth, say another prayer. He said, this isn't a, a separation of church and state. This is our act as faithful citizens and as Catholics that we're going to say a prayer and ask God for God's guidance before we, we fill out that um, voting ballot. This statement lifts up our, our dual heritage because not only are we faithful Catholics, but we're faithful and patriotic American citizens with rights and duties as participants to the civil order. In other words, brothers and sisters, and I belabor this point, it's our patriotic and our Catholic responsibility to get out and vote. I invite us all to stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in your love and your mercy, Almighty God, we now offer these our prayers and petitions. For the church, that we may sincerely seek to love God and others so that the reign of God may draw near, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are seeking God, that they may encounter God's great love for them, enter into a life-giving relationship with God, and come to know that they are a beloved child of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For continuing conversion of heart, that we may revere God as the sole center of our life, and forsake all idols and allurements that entice us away from him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all disciples, especially the newly confirmed, that the Spirit will guide and empower us to pour our lives out in loving service to others, particularly those with whom we find it hard to relate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Archbishop Richard Henning and for all bishops and priests, that those who share in the ministerial priesthood may faithfully lead others in celebrating the Eucharist, living in union with God, and forming a nurturing community life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for Eddie Rosens, for whom this evening's Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers, if they be pleasing and beneficial for us, and for this lifetime, and for the life to come. We offer them to you, as always, as we pray together, through the intercession of our Mother Mary, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We offer all these prayers to, through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 517 in your Breaking Bread issue, O Beauty Ever Ancient, number 517. Let me find my life. 
Yet I lost myself in them. All beauty ever ancient, all beauty ever new, you the mirror of my life renewed. Let me find. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the Holy Church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Archbishop Richard Henning, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Eddie Resendis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body, to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of of the Father. So whoever feeds on me shall have life because of me, says the Lord.
Our communion hymn is number 323 in your Breaking Bread issue. Taste and see, number 323.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your promise and your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's, again, so wonderful being here. As you may know, Father Jack may, or Father John uh, may have told you that we're alternating. So last weekend I was at St. Joseph's, and I will next weekend be at St. Joseph's again. So, so we'll be alternating back and forth until uh, Father Cullity is, is back with us. So, my brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Make it a great week, everyone. Thank you. Our closing hymn, and it's the right number this time, I promise, is number 722 in your Breaking Bread issue. For all the saints, number 722.